the one in this building, we've got a pool, we've got an outdoor hot tub, an indoor hot tub, a party room, full gym, visitor parking, yeah. all that kind of stuff, Tons right? Of so yeah. you kind of have similar, if not more, amenities than a traditional hotel would have. What is up, you guys? Matt McKeever here with Emma. And so we're going to be talking about condos and Airbnb. And so a lot of you know my thoughts on the Toronto market in general. I'm pretty bearish. The idea of owning a condo and losing money every month doesn't make sense to me. I don't like it. But at a recent meetup, Emma actually kind of uh, broadened my horizons by introducing me to the idea of Airbnb in your condo. And in fact, it's sounds like in Toronto, you can get close to the 1% rule. I guess before we even get into kind of tips and tricks for people about uh, getting into condo Airbnbs, break down like maybe one of the better opportunities you've seen as like a buy a condo and Airbnb it. So I think the best opportunity in terms of cash flow is actually a two bedroom condo. Um, typically you're looking at close to $3,000 a month in, in traditional kind of like long-term rents, um, but you're looking at about 5,500 to six grand a month um, for two Almost bedroom double. condo um, for Airbnb downtown. Those numbers work pretty well for me. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and so what, what would you be acquiring like that two bedroom condo for? Um, somewhere probably in the ballpark of like 650-ish. Right. Yeah, so we're getting very close to the 1% rule there, yeah. guys. And in fact, it's going to be a relatively hands-free management experience for you compared to a freehold house, which has a lot more repairs and maintenance that you're going to have to take care of. So. Yeah, so uh, downtown, there's a couple of uh, property management companies downtown if you want it to be like a fully passive type of thing. Um, who will coordinate all the cleanings for you. They'll pick up all yeah. your supplies. There's some that will do it on kind of the cheaper, which would be like 10% of gross rents. So okay. you, th this is also something that you need to factor into monthly cash flow because this could hurt your cash flow, yeah. but it also could make things like a Very lot easier easy. for you. So I say 10% of gross rents would be pretty low okay. up to, um, there's a company that I work with down here that does 20%. Uh, However, they also have their own side platform and they work with like Fortune 500 companies to do for executive, executive stays, rentals, right? Yeah. So you're usually gonna get a higher quality uh, tenant that way for you know maybe a, a month to three month period, which is a lot of peace of mind for, for people when they're not there, right? So, yeah, no, uh, that's huge. 10 to 20% of gross rents is kind of what you're looking at from a management perspective. So as far as actually taking the leap and starting to Airbnb a condo, yeah. what should people be aware of? What should they be looking for? So I think the most important thing because in London, there's not as much competition. In yes. Toronto, there's still enough demand, but there's a hell of a lot more competition. So I think that the you need to look at this like you're gonna be selling your condo. Like you need to stage this appropriately. Yeah. Um, the good thing with Airbnb is they actually take professional photos for you. So that sort of eliminates one of those costs. Things that I've done in the past, I've reached out to stagers and asked, Hey, do you have any old art oh, that might be, you know, like it has a hole in it. You would never yeah. give up um, and try and like stockpile some staging yeah. artwork. So you have like nice home set stuff mm -hmm. that they can't utilize anymore. Like it needs to look better than a hotel, I think. You need to make sure that your um, check-in procedure is very clear to understand because ultimately we're working off reviews here, right? Yeah. Reviews are the bottom line. That You want to get good mm -hmm. reviews, that's going to generate your business. If I'm not mistaken, Airbnb works kind of like on an SEO type yeah. of uh, platform. So the better reviews you get, the Absolutely. higher you're going to be up on the... Like anything. And so it. what's something to be aware of if you're Airbnb in a condo that you might not if you were doing a freehold? Because like, so, you're probably going to want them not to really create a distraction in your building when they're checking in. Yeah, you want to kind of be as, you know, you want to have as sneaky of a check-in process Discreet, as possible, yeah. which means that in most circumstances, you want to have maybe a lockbox outside somewhere that's very easy for them to find mm -hmm. versus, hey, I left the lockbox in the stairwell oh, well, you need to check in with a concierge <laughs> in order to get uh, authorization yeah. in the building, right? So um, certain things like that, making it as simple and as easy for the person to get in without creating a distraction yeah. or being... Uh, without you know, pissing off the yeah, condo yeah. and your tenant or your guest. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think that that's... That's a very major component in getting mm -hmm. a, a good review. But I think that also listing out any amenities that your buildings have, because in most yeah. circumstances, the, the Toronto condos downtown have fantastic amenities, most of them. Like the one in this building, we've got a pool, we've got an outdoor hot tub, an indoor hot tub, a party room, full gym, visitor parking, yeah. all that kind of stuff, Tons right? Of so yeah. you kind of have 
similar, if not more, amenities than a traditional hotel would have. And a lot of people do like to utilize those things when yep. they're here. So making sure that people know how to get there. Like, it's not as easy as just going to an amenity floor in most circumstances. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, go on the third floor and turn right. True. Actually, so having yeah. that will eliminate them going to the concierge and will make it a, a completely better experience for these people when it's laid out uh, and they don't have to ask questions. Yeah, and so something else you'd mentioned to me that I didn't realize is that there's condo boards now that are writing right into their declarations, essentially, that yeah. you can do short-term stay in Airbnb. You might I would say there's condo boards that did that oh, and there's okay. less condo boards that are doing it now. Oh, okay. So um, I actually find like more, more and more condos are writing it out of Banning it. it. Um, so looking for those condos kind of in the 10 year ish range where yeah. Airbnb wasn't even a thing at that point oh, in time. So okay. it didn't be, it wasn't an issue, which yeah. is why it's written in there. Gotcha. But as we continue to progress and this becomes more and more of a popular thing, um, there may be some condos, which I'm trying to kind of keep an eye on, but yeah. we're still very early in the inception right. process of the short-term rental so type of thing. So where do you find that exactly? Like if I found a condo and I'm interested in it, yep. how do I find out? The condo declaration is always included in the status certificate. Okay. Um, you could also request the de declaration specifically from a property manager, um, but I kind of have like a preset email that I just sent to them like, hey, uh, is it written in the condo declaration? Yes or no? Is it if it's not, is it permitted? Yes. Can this be changed at any time? Blah, blah, blah. So at least, you know, you might have an investor that's like, I love this building. It's mm -hmm. great because I can Airbnb it now, but I also had a building over there that my guy was going to put in uh, an offer and they changed Airbnb the day before we put in the oh, offer. Wow. So it can, it can happen like on a dime, right? Yeah. But it's just a vote. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why the declaration is more important because it's hard. The declaration is like the foundation yeah. of what that condo is versus property management rules. You know, if you get rid of this guy and this guy comes in, he yeah. can change everything. I think that the declaration is first and foremost, if it's in there, it's pretty concrete. Property management is also very important. Some property managers say they care and they don't care. Yeah. Uh, so there's sort of like a plethora of options or circumstances that could happen uh, but the declaration is like the most concrete one for sure yeah so that's what you're going to want to be looking at if you're designed to airbnb your condo unit is dive deep into that declaration and it should be very straightforward it'll essentially just refer to like short-term rentals yeah it might say uh you know our definition of short-term rentals is 30-day minimum Right. right versus it could be any it might not say any duration of time which means that it in theory should you could do mm -hmm. one day rentals, right? So every condo kind of has some consider short term rentals as six six months. Some yeah. consider minimum length as one year only, right? Right. So it, it varies. Yeah. And then as far as figuring out what you can actually rent out your condo for on Airbnb, mm -hmm. is the best way to literally just go on Airbnb and like look yeah. at the app or? Yeah. Definitely do that because those are like your true comps. Um, but I would say a one bedroom condo on a very slow night should rent for a hundred bucks on a high night call it 150 it could go beyond that but let's say between 100 and 150 bucks a night yeah. with very good occupancy like very little vacancy so i would say you know bank on 27 days a month or 28 right. days a month for it to be occupied for a two bedroom we're probably looking at 150 to 200 bucks a night okay uh, yeah. right so you're probably like i said $3,500 a month for a one bedroom is approximate gross rents if you just want a yeah. ballpark and you know, 5,500 to maybe like six grand would be appropriate for a two bedroom. Right, and then so you mentioned in a different video that it can really spike around major events, right? Particularly for here in Toronto. Yeah, it almost always does spike yeah. for, for major events. So obviously TIFF, it's gonna go up right. where you yeah. have a week of, uh, your 200 a night goes to 300 a night kind mm -hmm. of thing, right? Um, Caravana, this building in particular, because Caravana is like right next door. Oh, okay. Um, I, like I said, so I think someone yeah. right here for like 12.50 a night. Or 12, <laughs> let that crazy. sink in, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so yeah, I mean, you're gonna have major Leafs games, playoff yeah. games for the Leafs. Forget, yeah. Whatever you want, really. <laughs> kind of Stanley Cup finals. Stanley you get Cup to finals. Your price. I'm out of here. Um, <laughs> Taking firstborns. Yeah. So I think like in uh, you know when you guys are coming from London, it's yeah. still something that's very early on in London, mm -hmm. and it's also one of these things where 
you're getting maybe like what 60 to like 90 bucks yeah. a night or something yep. like that right whereas here because we're more major metropolitan yeah. city there's more stuff going on we're obviously getting higher rates um and even just people are more used to the airbnb platform which is a big thing because it's, sure. it's just very new to london ontario and a lot of smaller towns and yeah and i think because like i said toronto is such a young city I don't really know any of my friends, or I would never utilize a traditional hotel. Yeah, unless I, I would, had to. Yeah, right? no, literally, unless I had to, or unless it was attached to the convention center I was going to, I would never. Yeah, like if you're paying, because I mean, you you can also base your Airbnb rates off what con uh, what con what hotels are doing. Yeah. Where an average nightly rate in Toronto is like two to three hundred bucks a night for a hotel with no kitchen, two beds yeah whatever kind of thing right so if you're having difficulty in terms of pricing the other good thing too is the airbnb platform gives you suggested pricing yeah um or you can i think you can do automatic pricing with them now as yes well. yeah um <clears throat> so you can also just let that be your guide mm -hmm. don't be scared to go outside of the framework of what they recommend but yeah let that they'll be your guide yeah and do you know so on those big event weekends does Airbnb auto adjust that? Or is that something that the host um, needs to be I, So I to? think, if I'm not mistaken, that they'll spike it to whatever their max recommendation is, but right. I don't think that they're going to go beyond, beyond. It. So you need to monitor you those weekends because of it. you're leaving money on the table if you're not. Yeah, great point. And then, so otherwise, so realistically, when you're looking at Airbnb versus just renting out traditionally, one of the major differences is just the, like, the actual amenities you're providing in your unit, yep. but then also the cleaning. So any yeah. tips on how to find a cleaner or what to look for or how to build that relationship? Yeah, so there's a couple cleaning companies downtown. Building that relationship with them and giving them all of your cleanings very much helps because you might be giving them 10 to 15 cleanings a month, mm -hmm. whereas a traditional client of theirs is Go once with, a week kind yeah. of thing, right? Like an average nightly cleaning cost or average stay cleaning cost, I guess, because you're not billing per night, you're billing per stay, but would would be between like 50 to 70 dollars here whereas i don't right. know what they are in london but i'm sure yeah i think we're usually charging like 40 bucks 40 for, bucks yeah. yeah just trying to partner with someone and seeing you know are you guys willing to do this for 50 but i can mm -hmm. charge 70 is also another opportunity yeah. to another to make, little opportunity so, little yeah. margin there's little tips and tricks like that that can help you net a little bit more if you're willing to i mean i don't want to even do my own laundry <laughs> let alone other people's laundry but if you want to clean on your own, like yeah. that's an extra 70 bucks per stay right there too. True, and I was actually gonna say guys, just as a little side tangent to this video, there's a huge opportunity to do a specialized cleaning business that only does Airbnbs and 100%. actually like specialize in that. So uh, let me know if your city, if your town has that business, I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below. Or if you're thinking about starting up that business, let me know. If you're thinking about starting up that business in London, Ontario, definitely let me know because I'll <laughs> use your services. In um, Toronto too. Yeah, yeah. Because I think there's going to be a lot of interesting spin-off businesses with Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And not to get too tangential, but a friend of mine recently started, uh, he's actually filling the fridge. So like before you check in, you can be like, oh, I'd like a six pack of Stella or Heineken or mm -hmm. whatever. Very cool. And then literally he just will put the uh, the receipt on the fridge with a magnet and you e-transfer it once you get there. And so there's a little bit of trust the way he's doing it. But I just think that we're going to see all kinds of interesting tangent and side businesses rise up out of airbnb so i think it's just a huge opportunity but maybe before i wrap up this video any other tips or suggestions you want to share with airbnb and condos i in think particular? the only other thing is um and we, we kind of go back to like government intervention with, yeah uh you know thinking they're helping and, and potentially hurting like the um standardized lease agreement i think end up and and only being able to increase your rents by 1.9 mm -hmm. percent i actually think hurt the rental market and now you have a lot of people who are trying to forecast i need to charge an extra 300 bucks per month now because if this person Intake. doesn't leave yeah. i need to like i need to foreshadow or forecast mm -hmm. what's what's going to happen in the future if they don't leave whereas i think uh, airbnb provides people who are kind of nervous that I'm, I'm getting undervalued yeah. rents at this point in time, a little bit of breathing room where you're like, okay, maybe in six months I can charge this. You have that turnover versus mm -hmm. a long-term hold tenant. So I think that, you know, if, if rents are going up in Toronto 10% a year, which they typically have been, if you want to, if you're like, Ugh, I'm shy 10% right now yeah. uh, on my cash flow and I just want to break even, like maybe you could Airbnb for a year until you're at cash flow and, or until yeah. you break even and then you could go long term if that's more comfortable for you. Yeah, I think that's a great tip as well. If you're doing Airbnb, especially here in Ontario, Canada, one thing to be aware of is you're not going to fall under the LTB, the Landlord Tenant Board, so you're not going to fall under the RTA, the Residential Tenancies Act, which 
it essentially just means you're going to avoid a ton of red tape and you're going to have a lot more freedom as a landlord. So I think that that's something to be aware of as well. If you guys are enjoying these videos with Emma, if you're enjoying the videos about Airbnb, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. And otherwise, uh, actually before I wrap it up, Emma, where can people reach out to you? You can reach out to me at emma.pace, P-A-C-E, at zucasa.com, that's Z-O-O-C-A-S-A.com, uh, or on Instagram at pace of base. All right, well, until next time, guys, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks. Bye.